Okay, fuck it. Let's do it. God damn All right, it. Yeah. All right. Hey. All right. So where's, I guess Mike, I, I guess Mike is not ever going to join us. All right. Take. Just remember, the, take, the titties fix everything. Take five. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, fuck, I ain't going to read the intro. This week you get oh, no intro. Everybody gonna, froze on my end. Fuck the intro. We're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, look. <laughs> massive. I did an upgrade. We got big. We had, oh, as you guys can see in the chat room, we had some massive sound issues. I've had to, like, kill everything. And re Oh, God, it's going to take me all week to fix this. Anyway, uh, so uh, you all know Jack. There he is. Hi, Jack. Uh, and Hi, everybody. Our guest is TJ tonight. Hey. Um, and TJ is uh, TJ Stambaugh, who is uh, right. a co-host of the Flex Metallo Show with Jack. Uh, he is also uh, a local artist, and he will be at Baltimore Comic Con this weekend. Should you get a chance to go out and partake of the Comic Cons here in Baltimore, yes. and you don't get you know mugged on the way there or on the way hey, out, you know, take your decent party. That happen? You'll be fine. What's what's that, Jack? Yeah, that, has that ever happened? Did people get mugged there? Is that a thing? No, I don't think so. I'm just it's saying it because safe there. I'm just That's saying it because it's. Area. Cause it's Baltimore, you know, the the city yeah. that the city that breeds and, and shoots each other. And they have toxic toxic acid clouds that form. Yeah. Did you hear about that to happen today oh, yeah, in Brooklyn yeah. Park? Yeah, good time. I got an alert on my phone telling me to seek shelter, and I'm like, what? what's funny? What's funny is it happened in Brooklyn Park, so I'm surprised anyone even noticed. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, so this week. Uh, this week we wanted to do a Just Us show, which I guess is a good thing we didn't bring in. You know, we brought in a, a very understanding guest, a, a personal friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise it would have been, been really embarrassing. It's only mildly <laughs> embarrassing. Um, yes. You know, <laughs> and the best part is, is is Jack Jack was telling me before, he said, yeah, TJ's a little leery of live stuff because, you know, shit can go wrong. <laughs> well, TJ, <laughs> I, I'm here to inform you that your fucking fears were founded. You are absolutely yeah. Right, this shit. Yeah, there's a reason why I do everything on like a really crappy microphone. Everything's recorded and very carefully edited, though. Though it might not sound that way on the actual show. Ah, that, uh, that's all right. You know what? Our fans love the they, they love the, uh, the the live aspect because they get to yeah. laugh at us as we're like, oh, why does it work? Uh, you gotta admit, the Pete it. meltdowns are fantastic. Like, oh. I could just watch a clip show of Pete melting down for an hour. Like it's just fantastic. What the fuck? You guys gotta make like a you guys gotta make a Pete spazzing out supercut or something. I've been waiting for Mike to do that. He's he's threatened to do that many times. Am I being heard? Yes, you can be heard. Yes. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, hey, so Mike, you know what I did? I just fucking killed everything. I killed I I killed uh, a voice meter. And I went back to the old setup where you go into your settings and you set the audio and shit the way, like just by default, use my speaker, use my fucking thing. Yeah. So it's, it, this is old school. This is, this is, uh, this is the Are original. Are we riding bareback tonight? We're riding bareback. We're going, we're going in. You even killed me. I had to use my like Dr. Who powers and regenerate before the show started again. And that <laughs> was really troubling. It's, yeah. It's I was pretty... actually a black man before the show started and it's a whole thing. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So, so we're, um, we're, we're going to talk tonight. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and Jack uh, said that TJ would be fucking phenomenal for this discussion, was talking oh about spoiler warnings, you know, for shows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you said, said you have a whole thing on that. And I actually, I looked up an article on this. Uh, Vulture.com did a, uh, they did a poll on what, pe what other people thought. And I'm not going to get it. I want to hear your take first. But then... I will, after you're finished, I'll go on, or after we're done, I'll go on with what the internet says about spoilers. Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, what is it? The all knowing, uh, all knowing internet. The, yeah. So, the so, so one of the things that we do on this show is we, we try not to, to, to fucking like spoil stuff, you know, because we're, you know, we got a lot of people watch our show who are into geek stuff and you know, the geek geekdom is really bad for spoil. Like they're, they seem to be the most spoiler sensitive crowd. Um, you know, and so we try not to spoil stuff, but at the same time, we got to talk about stuff, you know? So it's like, how can you talk about the major things going on in geekdom if you don't talk about like what's actually going on? Uh, so there's a well, fine it's line. A, it's a, well, it's so, a catch 22, right? Yeah. Cause they care cause they're the most passionate, but at the same time they didn't watch it. So they can't be that passionate. So it, it's kind of a, 
like I get it. Everybody kind of lives in a, a Netflix kind of world right now. Not everybody watches everything as it airs, but still. But continue. I'm sorry. I... Oh no, 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 no. It's exactly, and, and, no, and that's no. that's exactly what I'm. That's exactly what I. I think I've said to you, Mike, before. I've said, what, what is our? It's like two weeks, right? We give it two weeks because we're like the the thing is we don't want to spoil it right away. Like if we watched, you know, uh, let, let's say. Um, and let's say the, the season finale of Game of Thrones was on Sunday night. I probably right. wouldn't talk about spoilers Monday. Our show's on Monday, so Monday night. Uh, but I would give it a week or two to talk about it. Um, but then I feel like at the same time, I feel like we're kind of cutting our own balls off because now we can't be cutting edge because we're not talking about the shit that's actually happening. And other people are, right? Because yeah. they don't give themselves yeah. the same thing. So they get the leg up on anything that we could talk about that's interesting at the moment. By the time we get to it, everybody fucking knows and no one cares, right? Because they've already talked yeah, about it. I mean, like, I'm, you know, I'm right along with you guys. Like, I'm a huge nerd. And the thing that, that I got into heavy, I mean, I'm a Game of Thrones fan, but the thing I got into heavy this year was Twin Peaks The Return, yeah. which bleeds over into its own geek thing, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And there was a, a show I listened to that was the Twin Peaks rewatch, where they actually went back and they rewatched all the old season. And then mm -hmm. when the new season came back, they were re they were watching that, not rewatching it. But honestly, like, I want, as soon as that episode was over, like I enjoyed their, you know, their thoughts so much. I was like, I can't wait to hear what they have to say about that episode. And like, if I had to wait two weeks for them to talk about it, I probably wouldn't care anymore. Cause like, as a fan, like, you know, once game of Thrones ended, like there's just stuff I want. Well, maybe not game of Thrones. Cause it wasn't the most like thought provoking thing. Not that I didn't enjoy <laughs> it, but there wasn't like, yeah. I, not, not, that sounds like pejorative. Like I did enjoy it, but there wasn't like a lot of burning questions. You know what I mean? But Usually it is like once something ends, like you want to strike while the iron's hot. You know what I mean? Like in a couple yeah. of weeks, I'll be on the Punisher or something else. Yes. You know what I mean? Like it's right. hard to, it's hard to keep that momentum up. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Right. Well, at th that's part of our problem as with our show is, but we're not specifically a fan, like a, a cast. What do you call it? like a fan cast for sure. a specific it's show? It's not a specific thing. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. So we're not like saying, Hey, tune in and, we talk about this, so we want to talk about it, but we right. don't want to alienate like the four fans we have in the chat room that haven't seen it yet either. So I get that. Uh, well, we did I, that I, whole I episode it, on Westworld, and I hadn't yeah. seen a single episode. And then, I, oh three weeks shit, later, I'm I so watched sorry. it. I'm so sorry. So no, 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 and, yeah, and I watched it, and I totally enjoyed it. And the spoilers, half of them, I forgot. And then I went back after I finished the series. I went back and listened to our show, and I enjoyed our show so much more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this, this is an unpopular opinion, but I do, I don't even buy into the whole spoiler thing. Like I think that people are like, oh, I found this out and it ruined it. Like if something's good, it doesn't matter if you know it's going to happen or not. Like exactly. When, like yeah. when I was a kid, like when I was probably I don't know eight years old, somebody told me that that Darth Vader was Luke's father, and it didn't ruin Empire Strikes Back for me. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's the biggest geek spoiler in the history of movies and fiction you know what i mean yeah and i think if something is good it's just good like I, I i think that people it's one of these things where you know with social media and the fact that everybody's got their opinion like right away and everybody's like oh whoa, whoa, whoa spoiler alert but i think that's just like an easy button to push where people will be like yeah you're a dick you know what i mean like right. people just <laughs> people just look for <laughs> angles to like yell at somebody they don't actually yeah. like think about like what did me learning so-and-so died on Game of Thrones really ruin? Like, nothing. I mean, like, it's a little bit of a surprise, but, like, generally, what are you surprised by in anything anymore? Every movie, we know every character that's going to show up seven months before the movie comes out. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like, there's so much discussion everywhere about everything. Like, you know what's going to happen half the time. Like, I don't... I think, like, we're nostalgic for a world that never existed. Yeah. Like, yes. It's like, man, exactly. I wish we lived in 1990 when we read a magazine and then two years later a show came out. Like, right. no, you don't. You're 20 <laughs> years old. You don't remember any of that shit. Right. <laughs> and, you know, like, it, it, it's interesting because um, when I was a kid, uh, you know, I, I saw Empire Strikes Back before I saw Star Wars because, right. um, I don't know, because Star Wars came out, I was seven, right? And my folks, they, sure, they sure. weren't really into sci-fi and shit like that. And nobody told me about it. So by the time, you know, uh, Empire Strikes Back came out, you know, I think I was, what, I was like 10 or 11, somewhere in there. And, right. um, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to go see this movie. So I went and saw it and, and then somebody's like, well, you know, that star, you missed Star Wars. And I'm like, oh really? And then, then I saw Star Wars second. 
So I already had that spoiler way early. So I see Star Wars knowing that Darth Vader's Luke's father and it didn't bother me one bit. I will tell you this, though. There is one movie that I got a spoiler on that I really wish I hadn't because I think it would have been a better movie. And it was it was Angel Heart with um, with Mickey Rourke. I would have never guessed that. That's a great movie. I wish I hadn't known that he was Satan. You know, or that, yeah. that. Oh, what the fuck! Yeah. <laughs> that, that, not, you know that, that. No, it's not. Mickey work wasn't saying. You wish. The, the you guy. wish somebody told you that there was those Lisa Bonet sex scenes, so you could have brought the lube. Yeah, like. right, right, right. The lube in, in my, uh, in my, what, my, my bath towel. You know, oh, my something. Beach you know towel. who Lisa Bonet is is with? Do you know who her husband is? Yeah, it's uh, uh it's the, Cal Drogo. Yeah, Cal Drogo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that not the Cal weirdest Drogo. couple? What is she like? Fifty. Like, seriously, he's still, still holding it together. He likes She's holding women. it together. Yeah, yeah. But, well, apparently he could have any piece of ass on the planet, right. and that's who he chose. Like, I, it's an interesting choice. Jack, that's all I'm hey, saying. Jack, 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 what's on your face right now? What's on the bottom of your face? Beard. A beard. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's good thinking. Oh, could be. Oh, oh, Ooh, I see what you did there. I see what you did yeah. there. Maybe Count uh, Count Drogo likes a little bit of the, you know. <laughs> yeah, anyway. but in this day and age, why doesn't he come out and be like, "I swing swords and dicks"? Like, yeah, just oh, yeah. Like, you know would anybody I mean? care? Would would any? No, no, I wouldn't care. The internet. I don't care. I don't care about him anyway. <laughs> right. he's, he's barely famous. These these days, if he, yeah. if he was gay and he came out gay, the internet would give him an award, right? He would. He I can't would, even think of his what's his name? I can't even think of his fucking name right now. It's um. Uh, uh, Momoa, Jason Mo- yeah, Momoa. Yeah. yeah, Jason Momoa. Yeah, he's yeah. Hawaiian. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, I should seems know like that. Cool on one of uh, on on my other podcast, movie the podcast, we have uh, we have a, a, a scale that we judge women, where we Langen camps like Heather Langen camp. But if you're, mm-hmm. uh, I forget the exact metric, but I think if you're uh, three Langen camps, that's equal to one Momoa. Oh, okay. So <laughs> the most beautiful, <laughs> most beautiful woman is just as good as the most beautiful man. So I think that shows you the mindset of movie, the podcast. Nice. So. Okay. <laughs> so, so let's, let's go talk on. about some beards. Well, yeah. wait, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, a whole crew of them. <laughs> I've, been, I've been working on this, this, uh, uh, formula here and it has to do with the coefficient of the popularity of the show. We're going to call that the cause pop. I like that. Div- yeah. Divided by time is equal to the spoiler. Is 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 sort of this spoiler? Uh, I don't know what we're, we need to. I, this is where I need help because like the spoiler potency. Yeah, like yeah, the, like, like, yeah, like yeah. you know, yeah, yeah like there's going to be a spoiler scale, and you know, the time, you know, this coefficient, like, all right, it's been three months. Oh, well, for this, yeah, you're fine. Or, oh, it's been a week. Oh, not yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I, I got. You. I, I think there's something like that for this because, yeah. especially for a show like. Hey, um, but, but I got one oh, point to oh, that. Oh, okay. hold, hold, all right, all right, but hold hold your point because see, it gets complicated again. Because now we're I'm going to throw in this, not only just a movie. Now you've got Netflix who just you know spews all the entire season of something out there, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, oh, you got to binge, you got to watch it all, and then once one person gets sucked in, and then you're like, oh my god, it was so good. It's like, oh, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, hurry up and watch it. It's like, oh. uh. oh, and yeah. then, but. The Netflix shows are like it's like uh, the only thing I can equate it to is like like Call of Duty or like a popular video game because I remember when Defenders came out a couple of weeks ago, I woke up the morning after it came out, and like people already had memes up about yes. it and have gone through like every episode. I'm like, how do you people not sleep? Like, did you just go like watch the whole? <laughs> and it's just like when you when I used to play Call of Duty and like the new one would come out and you'd log on like four hours after it came out and somebody's already like double prestiged. It's like. What the fuck? All right, so I got it. I got it. All right, so so here's here's uh, two points on this. So the first point is, if you are a if you're a diehard fan, and you really give a shit about spoilers, right? Why didn't right. you watch that shit yet, loser? Right. Right. right? Okay, but that's right. now now this is gonna be separate from the Netflix. This is this is regular TV that comes on, you know, specific nights and movies that come out. So if you're not seeing that shit. Within like a couple days or a week or two, a week. You, know, you gotta get it's a week. At all least. right, let's say let's say a week. Yeah. All right, let's I say think a week. week the safe haven. That right. that sounds yeah. fair. But if you're gonna be that pissed off about the spoiler, then you should have got your ass to the movie or the TV show because that's how much you care about it, right? Yeah, it, absolutely. Right? Okay. I now, totally agree. Now with Netflix, it's a little different because. 
the metric has to be a little different because it's not a two hour or a one hour thing. You know, it's like six, eight hours, right, of time. Yeah. And not all of us are 12 year olds who can fucking stay up on a Monday night, you know, like or whatever, like an 18 year old kid who's who's out of high school or or college, you know, somebody in college who right. doesn't have classes till noon who could stay up all fucking night and watch a TV show for eight hours. Right. And just you know, to point out, I'm super bitter that that's not me. Cause right, I, I know. Hey, hey, <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Picking I, am on like, you. I am not insulting you college <laughs> students that can do that. I'm jealous yeah. of you. But I'm just saying, you know, we don't we don't all have that. So you got to give them a little yeah. got to give them a little bit of time, I think. So you're saying we sure. need to take a square root of a loser coefficient. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but only. But hey, Mike, Mike, I'm, Mike, I'm working on this. Uh, on this, this, this formula. Here. Hey, Mike, you wow. only, you yeah. only take you need a dry the, erase board. Yeah. You, <laughs> only, you only take the square root if it's not a Netflix thing. If it's a Netflix yeah. thing, you don't square it. You oh, keep the number shit. as that means is. I got a minus. There's there needs to be a minus and a balance out for yeah. the. Or I think a variable like an X or Ooh. something. God, my head hurts already. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 so I had to take a fly math to graduate high school, so I, you guys are way past me. All right. So <laughs> oh, and if you were Netflix and chilling, forget about it. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So that's not if, a problem hey, with anybody watching Defenders all night long. Right, that's right. right. Not, there's no chill. <laughs> no, there's no chill. Baby, baby, calm down. Stop trying to blow me. Iron Fist is talking. No, okay. No, no. <laughs> that that falls into the Netflix and Jill category. You know, funny story. If um, there's a uh, guitar player that both uh, TJ and I are big fans of. His name is Brent Hines, and he I was giving, I was listening to him on a podcast. And he was telling a story about how he really wanted to watch Guardians of the Galaxy, and his girlfriend <laughs> didn't. And she was try literally trying to orally satisfy him, and he was like, stop, I want to watch this movie. And she <laughs> called him a number of names and just started breaking shit in the apartment, and he had to kick her out. But I was like, what the fuck? Gar over Guardians? You know what I mean? Like, that's a good movie, but I but, mean, come on. Hey, you hey, watch that shit anytime. I'll tell you what, though. You know what that falls into? That, falls in that, that, that touches on a whole different category of... Um... Of, of subject matter and that's i've always said that you know when when women turn down men for sex it's expected like men are supposed to just go okay right and we're supposed to just be like you know stop being so creepy and gross and you know she said no so walk you know but when a man turns yeah. down a woman for sex holy shit i can't tell you the number of times that i've said no to sex and i have caught the wrath of fucking god like like i <laughs> punched bragging. her that just shows god. you how many times you've been offered sex okay <laughs> some of us some of us have to save up our arby's coupon hey. and turn it in and then hey. you can't you don't have the opportunity to say no if we get it Pete. If it'll make you feel it's probably any... thick as a Pepsi can. We understand. <laughs> no, no. I will tell you this. It's a humble brag. Humble it's been brag. it's been a long time since any of that ever went on, right? <laughs> We're not in that territory anymore and haven't been for a while. So hey, I, I can count the number of times I've had to turn a woman down. There it is. There it is. Right there. <laughs> Right there. So just, just hashtag, just saying. Okay. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> enough of my humble bragging. I really didn't mean that. I've got a great yeah, story about just... this. I can't tell on the podcast that happened at one of Pete's parties involving a mutual friend of ours. But we'll, we'll oh, say this for another Pete? time. Hey, wait a minute. Was that no. Matt? Hey, 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 Jack. Did that have to do with somebody named Matt? No. Okay. All right, because there was one of those. Anyway, um, so so let's go back to the internet. Internet, internet. So the internet. internet. The internet. I says, hear they got that on computers now. They do. Yeah. <laughs> Not our computer. Hey, hold on, hold on. Dave said he's had to Not turn ours. his left hand down. He's had to turn what? <laughs> his left hand down. Oh god. <laughs> Is that turn down service? Right. Oh no. <laughs> And uh, oh, and David also said something about bearded elf, which is an inside joke. And yes, David, bearded elf would never turn it down. Anyway, uh, it says, "What is the <laughs> what is the right length of time to wait before discussing major movie plot twists on social media?" Twenty two percent say it's okay to discuss immediately. Twenty percent say seventy two hours from opening day, and nineteen percent say one week from opening day. Eighteen percent say two weeks from opening day. 
15% says longer, and 6% says never discuss. So, oh, what? 6%? Who the fuck is that 6%? Douchebags. Yeah. So, no, so you, can't, you can't ever talk about this movie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. it's, 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 it's Mr. Neckbeard Fedorison. Uh, yeah. So it's that guy saw fight. That guy saw a Fight Club in 1999. He's like, "Fuck you! I ain't telling you shit." Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna say that uh, what that's 42, 52, 61, 61 yeah. percent of the internet says one week from opening day. So Mike, Jack, our policy is somewhere between 72 hours and one week. We can talk about a spoiler for a movie or a TV show, and I'll so, give so it. That, that needs to be a constant in the equation then. Yes. That that's but like here but here again though. Then this is this is outside of your sphere of influence. Is that even fair to you because I guarantee half that shit is spoiled on their Facebook feed and they already know like you know what I mean like yeah. if something major happens in a film like let's say but, but okay well first of all let me backtrack a second. What's the last major spoiler in a movie? That you didn't know about. And I'll just stick stick with like geek movies. Like let's go with like the Marvel films. Like I can't name a surprise in any of those movies. I knew everything that was gonna happen. Yeah. And, uh, I, and the I'm, last one was uh, Han yeah, Solo dying fast. in the Force Awakens. Yeah, I didn't know I mean, that one. I didn't know that one. Yeah, and I, I didn't know that. I sequestered okay, myself. Yeah, that, that, okay. I will take I will take extra care as the viewer, the viewer beware. And when I hear sure. or think that someone's going to discuss it, I will just yeah, blah, 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 and and I will respect. It. Hey, right. don't talk That's about fine. it. Whatever, That's fine. Hey. But I don't want to know about it. And we can do that. No, the we, Han Solo one is good. That's we, a, that is a big one. And we can do that. We you know if we're going to spoil something, you know, and our show is every week. It's once a week, so it's like there's right. going to be a week between shit anyway. Um, so I would say, uh, you know, we'll we'll do that, and it'll be sooner than 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 it used to be. Because I agree, I th- I think that's bullshit. I think I think we've been fucking uh, cutting our own throats with that one. Um, but we'll and, just we'll just say, hey, we're going to talk about, and we'll do like we've done before, Mike. If we're going to talk yeah. about spoilers, we'll plan it for the end of the show, so that yeah, we yeah. can just go, hey, there's only twenty minutes left in the show anyway. If you don't want to fucking know this, bye bye. There you go. So when Luke dies in the next movie, you can you can do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. yes. Exactly. You know, sometimes I think when you're making the math problem, how severe the spoiler is, like how crucial it is to the plot, definitely there needs to be some kind of severity because uh, I'm a big fan of Rick and Morty. I know TJ is too. Did you have you guys watched Rick and Morty yet? No, I've seen it before, but I don't watch it. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's a a shame. I'm a shame. Big fan. Yeah, I'm a shame. Well, anyway, uh, one one night I just was so tired and I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to stay up till like 10:30 to watch this. I'll watch it tomorrow. I wake up the next morning and my whole news feed is it's Pickle Rick. And I was like, oh my God, this apparently was the best episode ever. And I missed uh-huh. it. And I immediately, like I almost called out of work just to go watch it. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was so good. And the Citadel uh, and Rick's episode last week was better. Uh, in my opinion. Yes, I know. It was so good. And it's like a cliffhanger. Um, but yeah, that's uh, th- that. So sometimes it works in the show's interest. Like I couldn't wait to get home and watch Pickle Rick. Because but, everybody here, was here again. If it's a if the show is good, if the spoiler is is something that's interesting to you as a fan base, you can't be spoiled because it's like still gonna resonate with you yeah. if you've seen something. Yeah. Like if it's just some dumb fucking like if it's some dumb splashy thing that doesn't mean anything, it's not gonna matter. But if it's something that like resonates with you as a a lover of whatever it is, a show or a movie, a book, whatever. Like, it's going to still mean the same thing. Like, I don't know. Like, I remember a big uh, thing that got, everybody got in a kerfuffle about, I think it was last year. I haven't wa- watched it in, in years, but I still read the comics. It was Walking Dead and who Negan killed, even though that's exactly what happened in the comic, even though yeah. they said for months that that wasn't what was going to happen. Right. <laughs> um, but that was a big deal to people. But, like, again, you can't tell me if you already knew that going in that that scene wasn't important to you because you love that character. Well, you know what I mean? And, like, I, I don't know. And that speaks to something that was – that's a good segue for this thing I wrote down, which is – Thank you. I'm a genius. You <laughs> are. <laughs> He's a precog. I've been podcasting for, like, nine years. I should know how to do this by now. <laughs> you think? We <laughs> don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got you got your predictions versus your spoilers. So exactly. 
if you don't know what's going to happen, like Pete and I love to do this. Like it's like, oh, oh, I know. And and th but this is what I hate. And and this is actually going to be. This might be a nice uh, other segue into Breaking Bad. But yeah, that's cool. I like to start predicting like how a show is going to end up. Oh, sure. and of course. Then then I get myself into a little bit of a tizzy when it's like, oh, come on. I right. think my ending was going to be like way better. Oh, yeah. Matrix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. So, so oh. no, 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 let's no. Not bring it. Please hey, let's hey. not bring up Hold the on, Matrix. Can Look, that be a rule soon. on your show? Don't bring <laughs> up the Matrix. No, 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 no. Well, well, soon. Hear this. Let me, let me ask. Let me ask this. What do you think? Let me bring up this potential ending. This this leads into what Mike is talking about because we talked sure. about this like a lot. We're like. After the, uh, you know, the part where, where Neo puts his hand up and the fucking robots fall. I can't remember if that was Matrix yeah. or Matrix 2 or whatever the fuck it was. That, it was, was, Matrix 2, that right? was the That was in uh, the Matrix Revolutions. Thank Two. you very much. Yeah. So if, if I said, I said, holy shit, you know what would be really cool is if that was like a second level of the Matrix made to catch people who fall out yep. of the first one yeah. and then try yeah. and trick them. Way and, better. Would have been fucking a million times better, it, right? It yeah. also would make more sense than Neo having actual powers, powers in the real right, world, right, which right. is what they did. Which it, it, that it, movie, it I hate that. Made of a I mean, Ugh. it's awful. And the thing is, like, don't get me. Uh, you guys really down a bad road with the Matrix, but <laughs> the fact is, is that the Wachowski brothers are hacks, and they stole that screenplay for the first movie, and then they couldn't come up with anything on their own. So that's why you got the the second and third movies, which are total right. trash. And the, then they haven't made anything worthwhile since. The Wachowski well, they both, sisters. Are they, are they oh, I'm sorry. Sisters I'm sorry. Really? I didn't mean I, I, the Wachowski <laughs> siblings. You can't call them brothers anymore. I, I don't mean anything by it. I really don't. I, sorry. They're, it's, yeah, it's okay. Wachowski yeah. siblings. Hey, hey you're, you're in a safe space. It's fine. Hey, <laughs> I spent $14 on Speed Racer. Obviously, I'm supporting them more than almost anybody. Right. And I saw <laughs> Jupiter Ascending. That movie sucks. Did you finish yeah. that movie? <laughs> I'll be I honest, did. if I had made What's Matrix movie? 3, I would have cut my penis off, too. Yeah, me Just too. Saying. Yeah, pretty much. Like yeah. <laughs> and you would have deserved it. Jupiter Ascending? <laughs> yeah. Either one. Jupiter Ascending, I fucking saw... Matrix 3. Oh, crap. Oh, well, not to – another cheap plug. If you want to listen to a, a pretty classic episode of Movie the Podcast, we watched The Matrix 3, and we all sound like we want to kill ourselves I know, afterwards. Right? Right. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. Hey, TJ, tell the tell everybody like what the premise for Movie the Podcast is. Because uh, honestly, I, it's one of my favorite podcasts, and I listen to oh, it all the time. Even though I hate thanks. movies, yeah. I, I love watching. And they they watch. I don't want to steal your thunder here, but I'm going. No, to. it's fine. Uh, they watch horrible movies and review. <laughs> not them. always. Not always. Horrible. Not always. But 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 come on, man. Some of those were like drill. Oh, we we watch some garbage. So like the idea of movie the podcast is that we have a theme every month. Uh, the Matrix Three we did on Keanu New Year in January. Right. <laughs> uh, currently we're in Labor Days, so we're watching all movies that have job titles. So we watch Repo Man, which is a fucking awesome movie. That's a fucking great yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah that's a good one. Also, fucking R.I.P. Harry Dean Stanton, fucking yeah. greatest character actor to ever live. Out. Yeah, man. But uh, so yeah, we do we do themes every month. That's like our bit. So in October we're doing Cocktober, oh. where like every oh. uh, every movie has to have a guy that shows dong. Okay. So, <laughs> oh. but we did. Uh, and I was thinking it was going to be chickens. Before this, we did uh, Above the Longest, which was all Steven Seagal movies. <laughs> oh Jesus! Do you guys do you guys uh, hate yourself? Every February we do Black Fistery Month where we watch like black <laughs> exploitation movies. Uh, we've done uh, what other good ones we have? We've we've had Dolph Sember where we watched all Dolph Lundgren movies. Crowember where we watched Crow all the Crow movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Saugust where we watched all the Saw movies. <laughs> well, wait, so it's, the, it's all these. The Saw movies every month are okay. Fun theme. The Saw movies are all uh, right, No, right? they're not, actually. The no. last one was really good. The other ones were garbage. But well, the first I one? Saw... The first I didn't two? Like it. No? And then the last. I, I'll tell you what. Saw 6, I think that was the last one. I think yeah. it's just called Saw 3D, was fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. And it was so good, I can't wait for the new one, believe it or not. Okay. Um, um, wait a minute. One. Saw 6. What, what yeah, happened we... in that one? Is that the one where the person was in the display in the middle of the... Like, yes, it opens that... up? You like that? that? Was, I, I don't know, man. I, it was in a dis but that scene had nothing to do with the rest of the movie. 
<laughs> yeah. No, it was great because it had like no plot and it was all kills. It was yeah, great. Yeah. It was, <laughs> and it was like 85 minutes long. Like it was perfect. That was my problem with that movie. Nothing in that movie had anything to do with anything else in that movie. <laughs> Yeah, but the rest of it was so, like, every other movie is so stupid and plotting. Like, at least this movie gave you what you wanted. Like, I just want to see the interesting kills, like, and, that, like, right. just get me out of there. Like, I loved it. I don't know. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's it's torture porn. That's yeah. what it is. And, yep. you know, just like all porn, you want to skip over the stupid plot that doesn't make any sense anyway and get to the act. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I mean, I've never seen any of these movies because I would puke just looking at the box. But I mean, the, the, I, from what I understand, they're just fucking disgusting, gory torture porn. And why would you need twelve? They're fun. I mean, they have their moments. But anyway, let's get. I'm sorry. I've, I've That's right. No, no. Show. This it's is okay. what I do. So let's. let's I think. <laughs> we, I think that the first few Saw movies were very cerebral. So so. Let's let's talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. let's, hey, back back. Let's wind it back to to Breaking Bad. And and the reason why I want to mention Breaking Bad is because it, it touches on another part of this whole spoiler thing. There oh my was... god, please tell me no one's going after you for spoilers for that show. No, it's no, 10 no, years no, old. no, 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 uh, it's, it's the other end of it. So I didn't watch it until this last month. So in the last sure. 30 days, I, I binged through Breaking Bad. Oh, it's the last two weeks, really. So it's from the last, cu last couple of weeks, I watched the whole series of Breaking Bad. Uh, it was, it was really awesome. I did, I did love it. Um, you know, there was, there was parts of it where, all right, so coming into season five, and I'm sure this is a, a very, um, like a f familiar sentiment that you probably have heard many times. That fucking fly episode. No, I'm fuck sure. fly. I hated fly. <laughs> so, uh, so getting into season five, it it was like the further I got into season five, the more I started disliking the show because I was getting into that. You know, like you said, like torture porn. I was just like. Jesus yeah. Christ, this show is such a fucking downer. God damn, poor Jesse. Poor fuck. Uh, fuck, they killed Hank. Oh, my God. And I'm just like, man, this is, you know, and I hate fucking, I hate Walt, and I, I fucking, I hate, like, I hate everybody on this show now, and I, that's I don't kind even. That's point, isn't it? I, I know, like, I got, I got, I got, but I sat it out. I, I, I was like, you know what? Sorry. I was like, the show is good. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to ride. I'm going to ride it. It's like when you, it's like when you're tripping really hard and you're just like, Ride it, bitch. Just ride it, and you'll be sure. okay. It'll be cool. Stop fighting it. So sure. I did. Oh, now I, we're talking about drugs. I can say so. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> just want. To... <laughs> so anyway, I never saw any of these shows for drugs. We can talk. Yeah. So so <laughs> as as it was rolling on me, I just wrote it out, and when I got to the end and I watched the last episode, I was just like, oh, okay, great, I, yeah, great, fucking good Love setup, it. fucking perfect ending. I thought it was fucking perfect. Yeah, there was a few things that weren't completely answered, but I was completely okay with those things. I was just like, yeah. you don't you don't need to know every fucking facet because otherwise the show would never fucking end. You know what I mean? I agree with you completely. I actually think that Breaking Bad is as close as to the perfect show as you're ever going to get. Like I think like wow. I think that the thing is about Breaking Bad that I respect so much is that uh, what's his name? Uh, a Gillian, right? Isn't that his last? Vince yeah, Gillian? Vince, Vince Gillian, yeah. Like, yep, yep. He, when he pitched that show, like, he had a beginning, middle, and end. And yeah. he just, it was, like, I think the problem with a lot of shows, like, you're lost, and, I mean, that's the first one that comes to mind. I think that they Walking have... Dead. A uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, Walking Dead's a little different because it's based off source material, but yeah, Walking Dead, too. Game um, of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still don't know but, how it ends, yeah. But the thing is, is that Gillian had, he knew that whole story, you know what I mean? And it, and you could feel that as it was progressing. And then by the time it ended, it was just like, it was so complete and beautiful. Like, I love that show. And I love, I, I you know, I'm a big character guy. Like, I love character study movies. Yes. Like, one of my favorite movies is uh, There Will Be Blood. And mm -hmm. I think that, like, Walter White's transformation is so complete and amazing. Like, I, I don't know, I think... Like, I get very, you know, uh, philosophical about that show. I think it is transcendent. Like, I, I think it's an absolutely incredible show. Well, and, like I said to you, Pete, earlier today, like, it, something that shouldn't be good at all, has no right to be any good, is Better Call Saul, which is also an absolutely home run of a show. Like, it I, is I loved amazing. it. I love that show. Yep. So, you will, so, yes. So if you and think, it, and look, it's like... If you think about it real quick, ahead. if you think about it, so like shows like and this is why I say Walking Dead. I think Walking Dead would be a fucking perfect could be a perfect show if 
when they started the show, they said, we're going to do it in five seasons. This is the big, sure. like you said, this is the beginning. It's the middle. This is the mm-hmm. end. This is sure. where at the end of season five, this is where we need to get to. Right. Yeah. They could have condensed I... down all the bullshit, got cut all the bullshit, condensed it down, told a fucking straight up story in and out. Five seasons would have been fucking a home. Would have probably would have been yeah. one of the most lauded shows ever. Mm-hmm. I... But but you know who would have given you that was if Frank Darabont stuck around. Like that's that's the difference. Like I feel like if you watch Walking Dead season one and two, th- that's a totally different show than what you ended up getting later. And I think yeah. that's mm-hmm. Frank Darabont. Like I think Frank Darabont. Mm-hmm. I mean his work speaks for itself. Like that guy is amazing. And I think like I really think that the first episode of Walking Dead, which was that like hour and a half pilot. Yes. Is the best episode of Walking Dead. Like, that thing is amazing. Like, that, that, I still watch that. Like, I think it's absolutely incredible. And I'm a fan of the comic, and I think they kind of had, they had two things working against them, right? One, the comic's ongoing, so they, they have a almost never-ending stream of fucking stuff to draw from. And two, it became the biggest show fucking ever. So it's not like, a, like, they're just going to be like, AMC's going to be like, here, Here's more money. Just yeah. keep writing this shit that's, until that's it's not profitable. That's the problem. The show yeah. makes too much yeah. fucking money and it and it hurt yeah. itself. It's kind of like when you have a movie that is given too big a budget. So like Deadpool, I think honestly, I swear to God, and I've said this to Mike before, and I've said this on the show. Yeah. I think Deadpool was so fucking good because they had a limited budget. I think that oh, movie, totally it would have been a lesser totally movie if they'd have put more money into it. I think yeah. that was one of those ones that the more money you put into it, the worse it would have been. Well, one of my one of my favorite directors is Takashi Miike, and he's made about 200 movies <laughs> on about a million dollar budget. And yeah. like, you watch his movies, like watch something like 13 Assassins, That's which is great. a really fucking great movie that he made on like $40,000. No, like, stop. <laughs> really? It's great. No, he made it on like nothing. And he made that in the middle of making probably two other movies because he's a <laughs> lunatic. Wow, so that's like, awesome. Yeah, no, I, I think that limitations make a, a, a project better. I mean, I think, like, you know, go down the line. Like, look at Star Wars. Like, Star Wars was a project that was incredibly hampered by budget, yeah. you know, by by mm-hmm. the, the choice of actors that they had, by location. I mean, a lot of people say it was saved in editing. You know what I mean? Like, I think that when you're given, like, the keys to the castle, I think, like, it – you think it would help an artist, but it really doesn't. Like, well, well, that's I, okay, I, that's part of the problem. Like talking about money, right? So, Star Wars. If Star Wars had, had all the money in the world and Lucas had been treated like a fucking god, right? Like, right. I don't know the first three fucking pieces of shit that he wrote. Um, then what would have happened was is that the editors wouldn't have been able to get a hold of the film and fix the shit because he would have been like, right. "No, I am Lucas and I'm God, and this is what it yeah. is." But because no, you would have gotten terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think I think a lesser budget can can totally save a movie. There's a uh, there's a song I'm going to reference that I I really love. I hate the band now, but they, there's a song by the White Stripes called Little Room. Yes. And the, the it's a very simple song. It's like when you're in a little room and you're working on something good, but if it's really good, you're going to need a bigger room. And if right. you're in the bigger room, you might not know what to do. You might have to think of how you got started playing in your little room. And that's yep. like that's so accurate. Like yeah. yeah. Like, you always have to keep that mindset of being hungry, because if you don't, like, you just get full of yourself, and the prequels fucking happen. Yeah, you the get prequels happen. The yeah. adventures of Fetso Jetso, and, like, all this other horse shit. Right. Yeah. Like, same thing with music. How many bands are great, exactly. and then they get a major label con- contract, and they're, they're just horrible. And there's, yep. so many, there's so many chefs in the kitchen, too. Oh, you need to do this, and you need to do this, yeah. and this sells, and then it all gets changed. You know, that's, hey, yeah, hey, that, Jack. that's all creative process. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Metallica. Mm. Oh, but yeah, that's oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Watch some kind of monster. It's on Netflix. It's because, fucking oh, incredible. Yeah. Because before, Have you ever seen that? Before that Metallica, is... before Metallica got big, they were way better. Like I even liked them a little bit before then. Like now I can't. I... <laughs> <laughs> that's since, an inside joke. Ever since, that's ever since, like... ever since one <laughs> came out, right? I I yeah. fucking hate everything they do after one. Like hate it. Like before that, you know, like Master of Puppets, like the older shit. I can listen oh, yeah. to it. I can listen to it and enjoy it. It's not my favorite, yeah. but but it's okay. It's good. But yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like one of the examples I was thinking of was Aerosmith in the seventies when they were yeah. doing drugs and banging dirty whores. They were amazing. Yeah, and then in the and 80s, they had like 
loading right. buzz in their recording studios. <laughs> yes, exactly, yes. And, and then, you know, <clears throat> they came back in the 90s and they got uh, signed to Columbia and they hired songwriters and guys who had written songs for like Shania Twain, like, uh, you know, were giving them the Aerosmith to do. And now they're just a puppet show. But, but you know, this is the same thing. And you can see that over their 50-year career. Like, it's just horrible. Their first two albums are amazing. And this then is, after 1979, it's all terrible. Slightly off topic, but like your nerd crowd might appreciate this. Steven Tyler did the title song for the uh, Battleship Yamamoto anime movie. It is <laughs> absolutely worth YouTubing. It is so oh, fucking God. terrible, but it's amazing at the same. Like, imagine Steven Tyler doing like a weird J pop song. It is <laughs> something else. <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> hey, imagine it's, Danzig doing classical music. Oh, I got yeah. Black Aria one yeah. and two. Thank yeah. you very much. That, yeah. Actually, yeah, they're, they're all right. They're all right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I said all right. They're okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, for a, for a fucking punk rocker, eh, he did all right. Yeah, from a guy from fine. New Jersey that lifts a lot of weights, it's not bad. I would say, Let's admit it. If Danzig what? was my age, he'd be on the Jersey Shore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. totally that dude. He's totally gym yeah. tan, laundry kind of guy. Like, he's totally a, a, a Jersey Shore kind of guy. I would say, you know what? I would say that, that the Misfits was, like, the best thing that he did. In my, This is my opinion. The Misfits oh, yeah. was, was the best thing he ever did. And then the only other thing that he did that I really, like, fucking loved was when he got into comics and he did this comic called Jaguar God. Yeah. It's one yeah, of my that was favorite fucking comics ever. Now, he worked with Frazetta on it and he probably had, like, really good writers and shit. And his role was probably minimal, but the, he was involved in it. He was the driving force for it. And that was, it, it is a fucking phenomenal yeah. comic. No, that shit's awesome. It, wasn't that his imprint, too? Like, didn't he yeah, have his Verata, own? Yeah, Verata yeah. Comics. He had that and he had Satanica and he had. Had um, I mean, he had a couple Satanica, more, but Satanica was Simon Beasley, I think, was on the it? art. Yeah, I think, I th- yeah. I th- at least I think he did the covers. Like he definitely had a lot of that kind of like very uh, not not heavy metal the music, but heavy metal the like yeah. magazine, like a lot oh, of those guys. Oh yeah, dude, no, it it was yeah. fucking that that whole comic line, that whole like company was awesome. But the only problem was. It was too cool for general populace. So like, yeah. whereas we would love it, right? Like, like the general, like kids couldn't go into the store and buy the fucking comic books because they were like, you know, people fucking blood, you know, and guts and, right. you know, people getting their heads cut off and, and shit like that. And it, I mean, it was great. Right. Well, but it, like, was, it was like ahead of its time. Right. Yeah, like, because I feel like oh, if you release yeah. that now, it'd be huge. But like this came out like in the image boom, like this is right. like not. You know what I mean? This wasn't in the in the early '90s. This isn't what people wanted to buy. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was. You're right. It was ahead of its time. If it came out now, it'd be fucking successful as shit. But like back then, oh, yeah. you couldn't. Who are you selling it to? Right? You can't sell it to the kids, right? And then adults weren't really buying comics a whole lot then. I mean, yeah. it was a much smaller audience. Whereas today, you know, people, you know, adults going to buy comics all the time now because all the time. I don't know if the stigma or the popularity or whatever the fuck it is. But like now, comics are like, you know, it's cool for you know. Anyone to go it, and buy comics. It's something that still like kind of blows my mind. I mean, I'm I'm you know, I'm by no means like a young kid, but you know, me at thirty six, like I remember when I was a kid, like finding comics was a difficult thing to do. Like I had to go to a comic book store and buy yes. comic books. And I mean and Jack can appreciate this, like in I remember at Cranberry Mall, there, there was a shitty T shirt store called Tees Etc. And they yeah. used to sell comic books. And I used to go there just to buy comic books. Like, think about that for a second. Like, it was such a fucking niche market. Like, you had to go to fucking weird-ass stores that didn't necessarily sell comics to buy yeah. comics. Dude, like, and if I remember correctly, uh, Tees, et cetera, sold T-shirts. And it was where you got concert and band T-shirts in, yeah, in Carroll County. Carroll County was a wasteland of culture. There was nothing but cornfields. Right. So, Absolutely true. If, if I remember correctly, there was a glass case in the front of the store that yes. maybe held yep. about 10 or 15 comic books, too. Like, it wasn't yep. like a display. Like it was no. this tiny little. You almost had to ask for him. Like yeah. a spin rack, right? Yeah, right. No, he's yeah. exactly yeah. right. No, it was like yeah. they had like it was all the image stuff because this is like the you know like ninety three, ninety four. So yeah. you know if you wanted the newest issue of Wildcats, they got that. But like if you're looking for fucking I don't know optic nerve or something like right, yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, my my so our place was uh, was the uh, there was a place down in Hamilton called the Hamilton News Mart, and that place they had a section. I mean, it was it was a section. I don't maybe 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 this wide that had comic books. Right. Now it was it was from floor like it was multiple levels, and they had like you sure. know they had like the the popular comics up top, and the and like your your heavy metals and shit down underneath. Sure. Um, so but they had a decent they did had a decent amount. And then I think when I was somewhere around 17 or 18, there was a comic book store that opened up cutting down edge. the road, uh, Cutting Edge. Yeah, I went down there. That was a fucking great place. But there was a place we used to go when we were kids. If you really wanted comic books, we I would walk like 45 minutes down Harford wow. Road, down past Co- – right near Coco's Lane, Mike. And there was a place called Comic Book Kingdom. And not only did they have a fucking like wall-to-wall comics. Like this was a real comic shop, like 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 the real deal. They also had boxes and boxes and boxes of the old shit. So you could buy all these oh, old awesome. comics. You know, had like like an old Superman up on the wall that was like $1,000 or whatever. Wait, and wait, wait. You walked 45 minutes down Hartford Road? Yes. How are get, you alive? To, dude, this was back. No, no, no. No, no. This was back in the day. Yeah. This was this was back in the oh. 80s when, when Hamilton, you could go out and fucking play all night long and nobody no, would bother. No, what he him. meant when he said I walked down is he met up. That's what those people in the country say. We're going to go down oh. to New York. No, I down. down no, I, was, I was down, down, down towards the city. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Wow. No, no. Dude, down near Coco Lane. I lived up on White Avenue. That's what I'm saying. Coco Lane. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like once you call, cross Frankfurt, it's the wire. No, no. You know I mean? like, now, now it is, but not in the eighties. In the eighties, that shit was safe. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that the it kind of took a dump in the nineties, like really fast. Where's, Hamilton where's went. Down. Huh? Not Coco where's Lane. Coco? What am I talking about? Coco's Pub. You know what I'm oh, talking about, Mike? Um, I know. The, I know the place where we get crab right. cakes. You like? Yeah. Yeah, Coco's. Yeah, yeah, Coco. Sorry, Coco. Sorry, there is a place called Coco's Lane that's down in fucking um, Ellicott City. Ellicott City. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 screwing it, I'm screwing it up. So Coco's. Right. So it was just. It was like a couple, a couple stores up from Coco's. It's not there anymore. It's been gone for a long time. But they used now to have it's a, a uh, dollar store or a <laughs> or or a <laughs> hair <wireless>. place or uh, <laughs> like you get your extensions there. You, you get that's your tumbleweeds. <laughs> <laughs> Pre pre tumble. <laughs> tumble weaves yeah before you're yeah anyway so what was talking about breaking bad how did they- <laughs> yeah, we're digressing no no it's fine it's fine it's fine so so jack you came you came in late you came in on westworld and like you said there were spoilers oh, for you so but yeah. but you didn't care right because i mean it was still a fucking awesome show i didn't right. care because the show is so good and westworld was probably one i think i like westworld better than i like game of thrones to be yeah. honest yeah like, I, I, I agree totally agree i can't wait until the next season and yeah. we did a whole show and Mike sat there and spoiled everything in the whole show. And I watched it and commented on it. And yeah, then when it I came time, it. I had I no, I was it. like, I knew this was going to happen, but I love it. You know what I mean? Like it had no, you know, we had that whole conversation on the bicameral mind and all that stuff. And that actually enhanced the experience because I had some science and some background. When I saw it, I wasn't completely confused and bewildered. Right. I, you know, it's spoilers is, is, is pretty much, you know, in the, in the eye of the beholder, I think, you know, you, you, it can ruin stuff. It can, it can excite you. I, you know, it's, it's what you make it like everything. I, I totally, Christopher Nolan's brother is a fucking talented guy. You got to give him a lot of credit. Like, cause that was his baby. And, and that really? show. Yeah. That, that's uh, I forget his name now, but it's Nolan. <laughs> Whatever. Fuck it. There's too <laughs> much talent in that family. They're eating it up for everybody else. I mean, Christopher yeah. Nolan's genius so i yeah but like uh westworld was his baby and apparently it had a lot of production problems like apparently it stopped well it not apparently it did it stopped filming after like the third episode and they retooled the entire season and knowing that watching it i was like waiting for it to be like oh where's this weird pitch change but i never felt it at all like i never knew no i i I loved Westworld, and I was so bummed out, uh, bummed out to find out that they weren't going to do another season for two years. I yeah, was like, no man, shit. Man. Yeah. Like, hey, gotta, right, here's a, so here's a question. Right. Everyone here has seen Westworld, correct? Yes. 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 Hold on. Hold yeah. on. I have. Hold on. I got something to show you guys. He's got a sex spot. Yeah. I, I <laughs> got it on the Blu-ray. Look at this. I got the Westworld Blu-ray right here. The original. Oh, nice. oh the original. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I love right. the original's great. Yeah, the original is great. The the recent Westworld. All right, I'm gonna go down and take a, a poll. Jack, yes. did you you binged it, obviously. Yes. 
Okay. I, it took me like two weeks. Yeah. Okay, Pete, did you binge it? No, no, I watched it as it came on. Okay. Yeah, so did I. I watched it week to week. Now, for there were two of us who binged it and two of you who watched it week to week. Did did uh, your experience watching it week to week, do you feel like it had an effect on you? Do you feel like at some point you thought things were going a little slow or uh, you, things that were predictable were overly predictable or no. things like that? Mm-hmm. Nope. No, I don't think me. so. But at the same time, like you'd have to ask me when I was watching it. Like it's hard to remember. You know what I mean? Like, does that make yeah. any sense? Like, it's yeah, because there's to... so much. There was so much going on. There, there was. I, and I just remember being really satisfied when it all ended. I was yeah. like, yeah, that's that's yeah. about right. You know what I mean? Like, and I know during it, I remember me and my my girlfriend at the time had a lot of dis- like. It was a great show because there was a lot of discussion after every episode. Like, yeah. oh, where do you think this is gonna go? Like, right. And I was continually wrong, by the way, like, as was Reddit. Like, Reddit was right yeah. about one thing, and that was it. Everything else that they, they and, surmised and, was completely wrong. And the only thing they were right about was the guy from It's Always Sunny was uh, Ed Harris. And that was McBoyle. it. McBoyle. I, yeah. I, I, will, I will tell you this. What I didn't I'll, – I'll tell you two things I didn't know, okay? And I didn't know that the two timelines that were going on were separate timelines. Right? Yeah, I, I had I had no idea. They got they got me. They got me. I didn't know that they were happening at two different times. And once it was revealed, and I looked online, I was like, "Fuck!" The clues were always there. It was yeah. very like if you were looking, if you were paying attention, and I I did I did pay attention. But I mean, I just I, you know when I watch something, I'm just I'm I'm enjoying it. You know, right. I'm not like trying to sure. look. To, I'm not trying to pick it apart while I'm watching. I'm just trying to consume it and enjoy it. But it was it was there. The logos were different. There was all this mm-hmm. different shit that that. And in retrospect, I was like, ah, fuck! I could have known that, right? Yeah, yeah. Second thing that got me, I had no idea Arnold was a, a robot. I didn't know. They got me. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that, know that, that, that threw me for a total loop. I didn't. I didn't see that coming at all. I mean, I didn't even guess it. Like I had no idea. When he after he had sex with her, that's when I nailed. When he had sex with that uh. Whatever, whoever that was, remember? Yeah, yeah, the, the redhead. Yeah. I kind of called it then. I, I, oh, I uh, was watching it. I did pretty well with my predictions on that. Uh, I, no, I did not get everything, mind you. I'm not like patting myself on the back, like I know everything. But there was a few things I was like, ah, uh, I think he's. A, you know, it was one of those like, oh, what if he was a robot? But then again, so, at the at the same time, there are times when I'm watching something and I'm skeptical about whatever I'm watching, and I can call shit left and right a lot yeah. of times. Like I'll be watching shit with Terry, Wait. and I'll say, "Oh, this is going to happen in a minute," and 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 it will. Yeah. And then I'll say, "Uh, pff, they're going to do this, right?" And then it, it happens like two seconds later, and she's like, right. "How the how the fuck can you guess it?" I'm like, "Ah, because if I was a writer, that's how I would write it. It's predictable. Right. I mean, of course that's yeah. what the writer's going to do." And and I'm and I'm like, and they're not wrong for doing it. That's actually good storytelling. Like it's like that's, yeah. that's how you should do it it was a good it's good but when i was watching westworld and like when i watched the expanse and like you know just some of the things that i watch i don't even look for it i'm just sitting there like i enjoy it so much it's like eating a steak i'm not like this next piece of steak is gonna taste like this no i just fucking eat the steak i'm just like i just sit there and you know know what i mean i'm like i'm in consume mode so i'm just enjoying it reference yeah (laughs) The, the fact that what, what's her name? What was uh, Dolores? The fact that Dolores was Wyatt, I think I was in denial. Like it was, it was all the clues were there. Everything oh, I, was pointing to it, and and I'm like, no, that's dude. No, I, fuck, that would. That's and the then, one I called. I did what? call that yeah. one. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like I, I, it was I there, but I was like, coming. I was denying it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I saying, knew it was good when immediately after I saw Arnold was a, a robot and the whole thing was white. I immediately wanted to rewatch the entire series to that point. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I yes. immediately wanted to go back, mm-hmm. and that's when you know it's good. When you watch something and you're like, "Wow, I got to watch this again." Because yeah, most yeah. of the time I watch something, I'm like, "All right, well that was over," you know. But that was like, I can't. I'm probably gonna watch it again in the next month or two because it's so fucking good. Yeah. You so, know and. Yeah. The guy that plays Arnold, if you go to his IMDb page, I don't know who his publisher this is, but he needs to pay him or her double because it's like one of the funniest IMDb uh, bios you ever see. It's like, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's like, he's one of the most defining actors of his generation. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like, it's so amazing. Like, it's like, I mean, that guy's good. I mean, I'm like. I'm sitting here like he's good Westworld. He's good in like Casino Royale, but like calm down over. It's not Daniel Day Lewis, but right. he, he didn't get his Emmy last night. I know that his IMDb <laughs> profile page. It's amazing. 
You know what's funny is I had never I, I had no idea who that actor was before Westworld. Oh, like I yeah. never seen yeah. him in anything before, and if I had, he's, I didn't remember him. So he's in uh, so oh. like HBO HBO does this a lot, but he's in uh, Boardwalk Empire. Like HBO recycles a lot of actors. Like a lot of times, if somebody's in an HBO show, they show up later in other HBO shows. Isn't so he also he, the bad guy in the CW? Uh, show as soon as, the, um, as, soon as you say cw i go i have no idea right. <laughs> the legends of tomorrow i don't know someone else can answer that question yeah, I've, never, I've never seen it but uh yeah. he's in Bordock empire he's in uh uh fucking uh he's in casino he's in all the the daniel craig uh james bonds he plays the cia guy in those movies oh he's been uh, in a bunch of Oh God! Is is the oh, fuck the 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 only CIA guy in James Bond, right? right? Um, yeah, he's the CIA Felix guy. Felix Slater, Felix Slater, right? He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fantastic. Okay. Um, All right. You know, so hey, guy that shows up in everything that that I think is funny. I just saw him in. There's a movie coming out in a couple months called like Suburbia or something. It's uh, directed by George Clooney, written by the Coen Brothers. And the guy that played the Yellow King in True Detective, who also played a judge in uh, fucking Boardwalk Empire, is playing like a mafia tough guy. It's like, I see that guy all the time. And he's like, I was like, where did I see that guy? I'm like, oh, yeah, he played the Yellow King. He was that weird fucking redneck in that like trash palace, like before he tried to murder Matthew McConaughey. Like, oh, okay. All right. Well, that hey, guy. look. Time is running out. I, we could go all night. We could probably talk all fucking night. TJ, we'll have to have you back on again. But before we go, Please. we got to talk. We got to. Got to talk about what you're doing this week. Got a big weekend oh, coming yeah, up, buddy. Come on, man. Oh. Uh, we don't have to talk about that at all. No, uh, we do. You said you we had, do. <laughs> yes, we, you said you had industry guests. I'm trying to figure out what industry you, I'm part uh, of. Like, so, you know, like ministry and United Sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah industry, right, right. No, no. And it's, when I say industry guests, I just mean someone who is in the Gigaverse who is doing something more than just yeah. sitting in their fucking basement staring at a TV and playing video yeah. games. So, like, no, you, I, you do I artwork in front of and my, stuff. Yeah, I do artwork and stuff. I do a lot of, uh, like, geeks would appreciate, like, I mainly do like pop culture stuff. Like uh, tonight, actually, I did a Joker painting and a painting of uh, Hunter Rose, the the Grendel Hunter Rose. Uh, both of those are commissioned, so unfortunately, they were both sold already. But um, that's what interests me is like uh, pop culture stuff, like nerd stuff. Like that's what inspires me. Like I love movies. Like I'm a huge film fan, so I do a lot of horror stuff and things like that. So. Uh, the Baltimore Comic Con this weekend will be the first time that I've ever done a, a convention. Uh, hopefully, it goes well because I want to do more. But I mean, I uh, I'm on the uh, the Facebooks uh, Art of El Topo. You can find me there. Um, and I also, I mean, I do like regular kind of art shows as well. But uh, yeah, hey, I don't. Man. I hate about you my also, art. <laughs> you also, dude, you also have, you have a Patreon. So if you go to Patreon.com forward yeah, slash, yeah, nobody's on that. I, I like kind of gave up. on <laughs> No, like, I don't know. I don't know what to talk do about with it. that thing. It's still there. El Topo art. So I'm gonna yes, right. hey, folks look, check this out. All right, look. We're talking about Topo's art here. So he, oh, yeah. he he has he has a uh you know, one day he says, I'm uh, you know, give me something to, to, to paint. I want to paint something interesting. It's gotta be interesting. It can't be just, you know, bullshit whatever. It's I really gotta... like this one he's about to yeah. say too. Like I, yeah, I yeah. love this painting. Like so, I was so... really happy when you told me this, like subject. Like there, it's funny because in any any time like this is a little inside baseball for people that are that want to get into art. Anytime you open yourself up to commissions, it doesn't matter if like all you've ever done in your entire life is portraits. People will be like, "Hey, can you paint a house? Can you paint a bird?" <laughs> <laughs> like I don't like I've drawn like I've drawn like a picture of like I don't know Stanley Kubrick fifty thousand times. Why do you think I'm gonna paint a bird? But anyway. Um, so like, I'm like Pete, obviously like we're very like, like-minded, like we have the same interest. So he, I knew he was going to give me something cool and I'll let him say what I did, yeah, but I so, really enjoyed doing it. So he wanted to do some like cool character art, right? He's like, he's like, give me a cool character to do. And Mike, you know, I love Flash Gordon, right? I know so, who this is. You have shown Flash this group? off more than one, so, more than one so, occasion. So I'm so oh, happy. Oh, I'm God, very I love, happy I love this. I, I had to take it off my wall in my office, but here it is. He did a fucking Ming the Merciless. Oh, yeah. Look at that bitch. That is, that is fucking awesome. beautiful. And yeah. I love Max awesome. von Sydow. Like, can right. you can you name another actor that's had a more prolific career than that guy? Yeah, Jesus no shit, Christ. right? He's good. And Who is that guy? Alive. 
He's like 140. Like, I don't understand. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> Mike, he's been in like a gazillion movies, but you might recognize him from Minority Report. He was the... And Game of Thrones. Yeah, and Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Was he in Game of Thrones? Was he, was he... Yeah, he's the Three-Eyed Raven. That's the right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Spoilers! Oh, That's right. God damn it. And and All so right. he's just, he's been in so much shit, right? But, but Ming the Merciless, in my opinion, he, is the greatest star- role ever. He's the guy that, like, the guy that we don't know who he is yet that gives the information that, in the opening scene of The Force Awakens, he's the old man that gives, like, the fucking thumb drive to the right. Empire. Right. Oh, that's, shit. That's, that's okay. Max von Sydow. He just blends in. You know, he's one of those guys. I'm really but, glad you liked that painting, Pete. It was a lot of fun to do. I, I, I was really excited. Like, you said Ming the Merciless, and I was like, ooh, yeah. Ming the Merciless. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've thought about doing, like, I've never wanted to do a cosplay. Like, I'm not a cosplay person, but I've been tempted because we go to Dragon Con and stuff. And sure. so I look up, like, who's, you know, I don't want to wear a wig because it's fucking hot and I'm bald, so I can't grow hair, so it's not going to happen. Right. Uh, this is not a fucking, it's not a, this is not a, like a, a style. It, it It's what it is. Um, it's a so, lifestyle. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's what's left over. So... You know, I, I'm like trying to think of cosplay. Okay, bald guy. And I type in bald guy cosplay. And I'm like, Ming the Merciless would be the fucking best. I got to do, I, I'm, if I ever do a cosplay, it's going to be fucking Ming. And I want to do him in the black outfit, like the all That'd black. That would be sweet. That would be sweet. You know what else you could do? You could do the leader, the the Hulk villain. But you oh, could yeah. like I could paint my head black or green. I mean green. <laughs> um, cool. The other one I was thinking of was... Um, was doing what about uh, Professor X? Like then it'd be even better. You'd have a wheelchair. You wouldn't have to push walk me around. around. Yeah, you could just be getting a hop around and right. just kind of zoom around. I also <laughs> thought about. I also thought about Lobot. You guys know who Lobot is? Oh shit! Lobot would be good. With the Lobot. Thing? Yeah, I thought maybe Lobot would be cool. Oh, that Lobot. Yeah. 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 Uh, what Lobot's other Lobot like, is there? That's mine. That's yeah. mine. That's you. You want to be Lobot? Lobot yeah. sounds like a bad Transformer name. Doesn't yeah, it? Doesn't does sound like they were reaching for like. Ah, uh, that's a Lobot. Right. He's a low rider. And he's no, no. He's he's, <laughs> the, he's a depressed. He's a, tep- a depressed, uh, uh, depressed Transformer. Transformer. He's like, yes. hey guys, what's up? What's up, Lobot? Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> he transforms okay. into a scooter. <laughs> yeah. He's, I hope, I hope they, if they put that guy in the Michael Bay movies, they get me to voice him. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Murbot. <laughs> Murbot. Oh, my God. I know you saw this today, TJ, because I saw it on Facebook. Did you see oh, no. that Jay Maskus video this morning? I, on, I did. On Reverb? Is yeah. that not the saddest sack of a man? He's just like, yeah, sometimes I plug my guitar into here and get some reverb. He's so I... <laughs> I watch this. So I watch this series on YouTube all the time. That's from Amoeba, which is like a record store in Los Angeles. It's like kind of famous, hmm. and they do this segment called "What's in Your Bag." So they they interview <laughs> like different. I've seen um, those. Yeah, yeah. They different different bands and stuff, and they interview Jay Maskus, and he seems so uncomfortable behind the camera. <laughs> I just wanted him to. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's, like, he's like, I got this record. <laughs> and then like they just like talk. It's just like that's how he is. That's how he talks. He talks yeah. like, and he's just he's like literally if depression took a human form and well, played I, guitar. He's I just, think he's, he's like, like he's like he's like, a, he's like a fucking like I don't even know. He's like a radio. Like he's like a high functioning retard that's just like really yeah. good at <laughs> guitar. Like I don't. <laughs> he really is. Uh, a guitard. He's a, a guitar. He's a guitar. Perfect. Perfect. I'm yeah. Sorry, I have to. It's a. It's a contractual obligation. I have to bring up the movie Radio at least once every time I'm on the internet. <laughs> right. Okay. So, I, uh, one more thing. One more thing before we go. So you have something. I saw that you on your uh, one of your Facebooks. You have something called uh, Space Boy. Is that what? What is that? Oh yeah, yeah. Space Boy is a uh, book company that I'm. I guess technically an owner of. <laughs> Oh, um, God. <laughs> nice endorsement. <laughs> yeah, I, I, do, I do all the covers for Space Boy, but we have about six. I think we have we have five out now. We're going to have six here soon. Uh, science fiction novels or a science fiction imprint. Um, you can go to readspaceboy.com. I believe that's the, uh, yep. the URL. But if you just go to like Space Boy and Google it, we're on Amazon. But uh, we got some really great books out right now. And... Uh, I mean, I'm not just saying that because I do the covers. I actually really enjoy. I get, I get. One of the perks of owning a company is uh, you get free copies of all the books, and I actually really enjoy all the books. So, okay. I highly recommend you guys check that out. 
Do you guys, do you guys think, ever do any I, anthologies or is it just all, is, is it straight up novels or do you ever do any uh, anthologies or anything? I'm really glad that you asked me that uh, because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> we did, uh, we did an anthology called Boned, uh, which is uh, really cool. It's like a lot of like kind of like horror type stories. Um, and every copy of Bone that's sold goes to charity. So we nice. don't make any money off that. Oh, good, good. All right, fantastic. Um, I did the cover to that. I'm really, I mean, I'm proud of all the covers, but I really like the cover to Boned because it was kind of me stretching my, my artistic wings a little bit. Like it's, it's me kind of try to do a like, scary things you tell in the dark kind of kind of cover. Like it doesn't look like my typical stuff. Like it's done in this kind of weird washy watercolor. Um, but everybody there, Nate and Sean and uh, Amanda, like everybody there does like really hard work. And I, I'm, I literally do the least amount of work for that. Those guys, like they do amazing. <laughs> All right. So, so are, uh, they, eventually, are they the eventually writers? Eventually I'm going to put a book out. Are they so, the writers or do they, do they recruit, do you, do you bring in writers and, and produce them? We bring in writers. Yeah, we bring in writers. Um, and we're always, and, and you can go to the website, uh, read Space Boy and submit uh, your ideas. We're always looking for new people. Um, but, uh, Sean and Nate, uh, Nate wrote a really great book called the reactivist, which I, I really like. That was the first one we put out and, uh, you know, Sean's written other stuff as well. Um, uh, and it's, I, 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 it's cool to be a part of, like, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, as somebody that always, you know, read comic books and like always, you know, I always kind of idolize like paperback artwork and that kind of thing. It's a really humbling that like my work is on somebody's bookshelf. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a cool feeling, you know what I mean? To be part of something like that. Like, right. you know, I feel so isolated sometimes in this fucking pit. I mean, you can't even <laughs> see me right now because I live in such a dark fucking shitty apartment, but it's cool that like, you know, it, it sounds like overly romantic perhaps, but like my work will live on far past me. You know what I mean? In some capacity, which I think is awesome. No, and, I think. I, I love, dude. I love supporting local artists. You know, where you know, we have a bunch of indie authors come on and artists and stuff, and and I, I like to buy their work. I mean, you know, I've got I got a, a painting by or got a drawing by Ben Bishop, who's an up and coming comic book artist. We had him on a couple weeks ago. I got one of oh, yours. Oh, that's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle guy. What's the that? whole time we were on that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle guy. Yep. That's been, yeah, the whole time we were on that, I was like, man, TJ should have been on this show. I know, he right? He should have been. Yeah, you would have loved that guy. So we, we had yeah. him, we had him on. He's a fucking great comic book artist. And he's, dude, he's going to be one of the big, he's going to be, he's the next fucking Jim Lee. I'm telling you, he's going to be big. Wow. And, That's awesome. And we have, uh, you know, and your artwork is fucking awesome, dude. Don't ever give up. You're doing great. I mean, your, your artwork is awesome. Really is. Thanks, man. And I have, really appreciate that. We have a bunch of indie authors on that, that, you know, I just can't wait for them to fucking become, you know, big names because their their work is good. Scott Sigler's been on our show. He's, I mean, he's a rising star. He's going to be, dude, if he's not the next fucking Stephen King, I just, I don't know. You know, he's going to be, he's going to be big. Um, you know, you it's, know. Like, it's like I said, I've said this to, to Jack and I've said this to a lot of people is that I feel like right now, like we're in like a very, I don't think people appreciate it, but we're in like a renaissance right now. I mean, there's yes. so many, and I'm not, I'm yeah. certainly not talking about myself, but like, <laughs> I mean, you know, you go to the, anywhere on the internet and like, you just see amazing fucking artists, like, yes. and, and writers as well. Like, it's just like, I think that. The fact that, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, right? The gatekeepers have been destroyed. But at the same time, like, now I think, like, people don't have that trepidation to be like, well, I don't want to pursue what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you want to write a book, like, write a book and, hey, you might strike gold. You know what I mean? I think it, more often than not, there's so many talented people out there. And it's always inspiring to me. You know what I mean? Like, I... You know, just through social media, you know, especially like things like for me, like Instagram, like I connect with so many artists and they're like, I love what you're doing. And I look at their stuff and I'm like, how can you love what I'm doing? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, you're yeah. So much better than me. But I think that's great. And I think that's that's one of the things that's not focused on enough with social media. Like so much negative stuff is is brought out. But like. Yeah so much creativity out there both in, in in any sort of facet of artwork and and you know media you know what i mean it, video production you know my, my friend bob rose out of baltimore he does amazing stuff with with film and video like it, it's just all over the place and i think yeah. i think that's great i don't think that's spotlighted enough it's too much bullshit Right. Or with social media now, everybody's connected. And you're right, the, the gatekeepers are gone. How about when you posted that thing on Instagram and a guy from a band that we both like, Weed Eater, was just like, <laughs> hey, man, I love that. I want to buy it. And you're like, uh, okay, I love your band. Let's let's do this. Yeah, and that, that was, was like, 
that, that never would have happened without the internet. In my life. Yeah. yeah, that was amazing. That was uh, Dixie Dave from Weed Eater, and then like I met him, and I, you know, I've been a fan of that band for a fucking decade, and I like walk up to him, I'm like, oh hey, it's it's El Topo from that. That's my artist name, by the yeah. way, El Topo. But uh, I'm like, hey, it's El Topo from Instagram. And he's like, dude, I know who you are, and like I was like, that's the weirdest thing ever, like for somebody. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, well, dude, that's like when we had Ben Bishop when he was talking about the the new book that that he's doing with Kevin Eastman. You know, I post the video online, like Kevin Kevin Eastman, Eastman? right? Fucking the Kevin Eastman, right? So he saw the video and it's like, hey, you know, he's like, I I loved it, right? I'm just like, Kevin Eastman just said he loves something I did. So awesome! That's so fucking awesome! Right? Yeah, no shit. (laughs) So. I, that, I, I, you know, I, uh, I've done a couple of paintings that I'm really proud of, and it, it sounds fucked up because I love, I love everybody's, you know, everybody. Like I've had very few negative people about my art, and it's great, you know what I mean? Like everybody, but like I did, uh, I love the movie Turbo Kid. Are you familiar with the movie <laughs> yes, Turbo? Yes, yes, yes. So the actress that played, I did a painting of Apple, and Lawrence Labouf, who played Apple liked it on fucking twitter and i was like well we're getting married now right like that has right. to be the way it right. is but yeah. and then uh, i'm a huge fan of jeremy saulnier's movies the guy that made blue ruin and uh green room and murder party and i did a picture of Macon blair from uh blue ruin which is like one of my favorite movies in the last 10 years and Macon blair liked it and retweeted it and it's just like like, is this real life? Like, you know what I mean? Like, this guy, like, I, I, I fucking idolize this guy. Like, and he, he liked my painting. Like, it's so cool. And, like, yeah, this isn't, like, fucking, you know, Hugh Jackman or Jarl- right, yeah. uh, Scarlett Johansson. But, I mean, it's cool, right? Like, it, 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 I just I just think it's I think it's awesome. And I think that we're, like, again, it's, it, you know, we're in a level of connectivity right now that's so cool that... All I ever see is like the negative shit. Like, well, Donald Trump got to be president. Yeah, yeah, well, it's not because of Facebook. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so many good things. I think that, I think just like life itself, uh, if, if forgive me for being philosophical, but like the negative things are easier to glom onto than being like, well, look at all this good shit that we're doing. Like, yeah. all these artists totally. are connected. And the thing is, is that. It, just like you guys, like, making your podcast, like, you know, obviously, I'm over here making a podcast, like, just like artists connecting with each other, we all influence each other, you know what I mean? It's all, yep. it's all about creativity, and, like, you guys do something that we like, and, like, you know, that, that spirit, like, carries over to us, and same thing with a, with an artist or with a, with a musician, like, I think that shit is fucking amazing, like, I, I don't know, and I think that I can't really relate to that when I was younger, like, it wasn't, there was a, a, a definite wall between the creators and the audience and i feel like that is obliterated yeah it's gone and i think that's a it's great gone. thing yeah i can't i can't imagine what you know oh god every time i try to imagine what life would be like if i had facebook and all the shit that we have now when i was a teenager there are things where i'm just like fuck i am so glad there's no record Me of too. Anything oh, yeah. in my life until I was thirty, like, because because I I was a fucking it's mess, a dude. World. Dude, yeah. oh, dude, I, there's there's some time hop posts I get from eight years ago, and I was like, ooh, that's not getting reshared. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude, when I was when I was in my twenties, I, I I was a fu- I was a fucking mess. I mean, I was a I'm lucky to be alive. Sure. I was a fucking mess. I mean, I'm not Mike D a mess. But you, know. <laughs> you are, you are. Hey, Mike, no. if you're watching, he's joking. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> now, come on, I love Mike. You and Mike. If you were, yeah. if Mike is watching this, you know exactly what the Mike fuck is I'm, not watching. No, he's not. Yeah. But if he, if he was, if he was, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. I don't want to hear shit from him. He knows. Yeah, he anyway, does. he knows. He knows. So we know. He knows. He knows. <laughs> he, knows know. he knows. He knows. We know. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> but we still love – I love Mike D like nobody's business, man. But anyway, so, hey, let's wrap this up. It, we're, 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 we're on time. We're like we're like past time, but it's been great. So I've, I've let it go, you know, because uh, cause hey, it's been good fucking that's conversation. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah no, it's hey, been listen, great. Listen, I don't think we're doing a game tonight, right? No, no, no game tonight. So, no, so I have one part of one game, one question. Okay, Can okay. I just throw this out here? Yeah, sure. Can we do yeah. this real quick? Yeah. All right. It's like a little taste of something in case, you know, maybe TJ wants to come back. We'll have him yeah. in one fair game. Any, Better right. come back. 
All right, all right. This is gonna be. I'm gonna give you. This is gonna be like a truth or fiction kind of a thing. I'm gonna give you three facts about cats, like actual furry kitty cats. Okay. Not the Broadway play. Right. Right. <laughs> Not the Broadway suck. play. Because yeah. So, but these are three facts. You tell me which which two are are uh, true and no, no. I'm sorry. Which two are false and one of them is true. Okay. Sure. All right. So A, cats cannot do backflips. B. Cats can walk backwards. I'm sorry, cannot. Cats cannot walk backwards. Or C, a cat can can't climb headfirst down a tree. Which uh, one of those foot. is true? Uh, well, yeah, we'll start with. Uh, which one is with, true? Is true. Yeah, yeah. Which one is true? We'll start with Jack. Um, I'm an expert on fake news. Thank you. I think uh, I don't think that they can walk backwards because I've seen a cat do everything else, and I can. My cat does backflips all the time. So I'm going to go with walk backwards. Okay. And TJ? I think they can walk down a tree head first. I think they can walk down a tree head first. Okay. So which one do you think is true? Oh, though that is the true. I'm sorry. Yeah, the tree one. That's the true one. That's that they what I meant. Can't, that they can't walk down head first? They can't walk down head first. That's okay. what I meant to say. Okay. Okay. Fuck, man! I have three cats. I have three cats, and I got one to sleep right over here. I she don't. Ain't gonna I <laughs> throw it up a tree. I have never. My cats are all inside cats, so I've never seen them in a tree. So I don't know. Um, right. And I'm not a cat person. So before that, I've never. I I kind of had cats at home, but not really. Um, so I don't know about the tree backflip. I want to say I've seen a cat do a backflip. I, I want to say that I have yeah. seen one do that. What constitutes it a backflip? Like if they get like halfway up and then completely turn around and land, that's not a backflip, right? No, like, do they have be... to like? Do they have to like? That's do like the a whole... half flip. Like, that's like can a you do a salt? That's like a imagine Terry a... Funk moon salt. Imagine a person doing a backflip. But like if I got you halfway up and, and I flipped over and landed, that's not a backflip. Right? That doesn't count. You're not getting halfway up on anything, yeah. but so, now, not me. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I, I, what I, you know, doing a me doing a backflip is me falling on my back. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, what, Mike, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with can't do a backflip because I think when they get halfway up, they turn around and then land. That's that makes be, sense. That's my thing. All right, so. You're gonna you all right, so So I think they can go head first down a tree and I think they can walk backwards. All right. Uh cats cannot do backflips is true. Nah. They can't do them. Okay. They cannot do they they will always do like halfway and we'll do a full we'll Yeah. Flip there you go. There but you that's go. yeah, so that's true. They cannot do a backflip. So uh Cats can't walk backwards. That is true. They cannot. Bullshit. Yeah. No. I don't believe that. No, 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 no. That is not true. I'm sorry, though. No, that is not true. I was going to say, because I put a sock yeah. on a cat. This is funny. You take a sock and you put it on a cat's head and they'll fucking go backwards like this and fall off the bed. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. It's called animal <laughs> abuse. Yeah. <exactly. laughs> now, hey, what? Uh, Too bad Mike isn't on the show tonight. We could ask him about cats, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, how long hey, can they go? Hey, oh, hey, never mind. Hey, here yeah. we go. Can can cats get out of attics? <laughs> no, that's no. so wrong. Anyway, so <laughs> it is true though. A cat can't climb head first down a tree. It can't. Oh, really? It cannot. That's I right. want you to envision wow. this. Cat's claws all go this way. Oh yeah. Uh, no, yeah, that makes sense. Have, yeah, they have to climb down. Yeah. Yeah, they would fucking fall. Cats, yeah. cats can fall out of trees head first. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that's your, uh, yeah, that's your. But mini if Charlie Kelly today. has taught us nothing else, is that cats don't abide uh, don't abide by the laws of physics. So hey, that yeah. is true. hey I got one yeah. for you. Hey, I got something for you. So, so I did. So I finished. I finished watching Breaking Bad. Right. So this is for Mike and TJ. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do a quick one. Okay, if you guys are okay, if you can hang out for a second. Sure. All right. So, um. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so so I'll, I'll ask Mike first, see if you know, and then I'll go to TJ. What is the name of the chem chemist that takes Jesse Pinkman's place in Gustavo oh. Fring's meth lab and is later killed by Jesse? 
Oh, so Mike first. And I'll take the first name because they didn't really they don't they don't say his last name. I think maybe once, but I fuck the last name. Just give me the first name. I, I see his face. Yep. yep. He made yeah. a nice. Uh, he had a good cold brew coffee. He thing. did. He did. He, you know, oh, what? yeah, he had a nice apartment. Little yeah. like little cool place. Yeah. That being said, the only thing I can think of and I don't think it's correct would be Mark or Marcus, but I don't think I'm right. So. All right. TJ, what do you think? I I'm the same way. Like it's been years. Uh, I think it's is it like Stevie or no? no. His, his name is Gail Botit Bo, Botichicher. Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Ga- yeah. Gail, all right, I'll do I'll do this. So this is an easier one. So these are questions that are going to go into my game. Cuba death. I'll do an easier one. So all right. Before. All right. And I'll start with TJ first this time. Before right. his partnership with Walter White, Jesse Pinkman operated under this pseudonym. Oh, shit. Uh, it was. I'll, I'll tell you this much. It was on his license plate. Yeah, it was too. Fatso uh, forget so. <laughs> it was uh, Count Dooku. No, I, I don't remember. So Mike, do you have any idea? No, killer, or something, something, death, something. Very easier. Man, because no. you just watch Breaking Bad. No, like, I if did, you I did. no, I, no, no, no. Fair enough. Fair enough. This this is for a trivia game, so it's one of those things where like yeah, these fair, questions fair. aren't fair. they're not super hard, yeah. but they are kind of hard. Captain Cook. This is pretty hard. Captain yeah. Cook. Captain Cook. Right. Captain. Oh yeah. God damn it. How did yeah. I not get right? That? See, that's a good yeah. trivia question. When you say it, and people don't know, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, fuck, I should have known that." Right. All right. So yeah. one more. I'll, well, this is an easy one. This if you don't get this one, you fail. Your give me your fucking Breaking Bad card. All right, and I'll start with Mike first. Uh, what secret ingredient does Jesse Pinkman put in his meth? Oh, it's it's uh, pepper sauce, right? Uh, I think it's pepper sauce. Yes. Pepper Is that sauce. your final answer? Yeah. Yes. Pepper sauce. All right, uh, uh, TJ? I feel like it was more specific than that. that it is. I mean, it you is. need to be more specific. I will you go with Tabasco. Like, Tabasco. I will go yeah. with Tabasco. I have to be specific. Okay, TJ? Yeah, it's Tabasco, isn't it? He puts in chili powder or chili pee, as he calls it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Damn anyway, it. so what do you think? Are there, are there decent questions for for a trivia good game? Good question. Those, those I think the third one's good. I the first, the first one, I'm like, Ooh. let's get. I take the first name. It's fine. Yeah. The first name's fine. Gail, come on. He was in several episodes to say his name multiple times. And he ended up being in a bunch of commercials after yeah, that. So, he was like. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I, you don't need to know the last name. You just need to know the first name, and that's going to be one of the harder ones. So that that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I could have told you anything else about him. Right. He used to be I a know. professor. He had curly hair. Right. I know. He I know. Loved I tea. Know. <laughs> I mean, I could reword it to say his teapot had a hole in it after he was shot in the <laughs> right, head. Right. <laughs> um. Right. I could reword it to say something like. <laughs> Who is what role did Gail blah 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 play in the series Breaking Bad? That might be right. easier. That that might be a better one, yeah. That might be a better way to word it. And that's that's yeah. some of the stuff that we have to do with the game is is reword the question so that it's still this kind of the same question, but yeah. it's like it it's like oh uh, some people could you know could could actually really get it. So, but the the chili powder one's good. That's yep. a good one. Yeah, All right. those are solid. All right, well, let's wrap this fucker up because we are way past time, but it was a good show. Thanks, TJ, for coming on. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. You've got thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. You've got to come back. As a, I've as been a, trying to get him on this show for over a year. How about an applause for me? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. All right, so TJ. Very, very asked me, uh, a year, he asked me once. So. <laughs> no, so, I've asked you a couple times. So, I asked you a couple times. So, so TJ, <laughs> look. I'm already recruiting you. You have to come. You can't say no. You're going to be on. Yeah, yeah. In, 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 um uh april or march it'll be like the end of march beginning of april somewhere in there we're sure. gonna we're gonna do our summer movie draft oh god and you have oh, you to don't come want me on. for that you oh yes you're you're gonna gonna on a movie episode. no 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 what this i'll is, never shut up no no what this is this is it's like a football draft it's like a it's like a fantasy oh, football draft I, where we buy movies with we each get a hundred quat lose to buy movies. Yeah. And no, we, we're and using we a different set of money this time. No, what's wrong with Quatloos? There used to be, there used to be a, uh, I don't know if it still exists anymore, but there used to be a website that did the same thing. Yes. It was like a fantasy football. That's where we took it, it from. Was, 
That's yeah, where we yeah. took it from, but they, they <laughs> yeah, died. That's where we stole it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we totally did. That's fine. It was called box office draft. So we stole it from them because they, they killed it anyway. They it doesn't it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, I don't think they exist. So. Right, but we do. <laughs> no, it's it's a great game. <laughs> So for people who love movies and have good opinions about movies and stuff, it, it's can great. We draft, can we draft Chinese movies? Because did no. you know, I didn't know this until like yesterday. I, I just out of, I was bored at work and I decided to go to IMDb and look at how many movies I'd watched this year, like 2017 movies. I'm up to 22, by the way. Right. Um, so the number four movie is some movie called like Wolf Brigade Two, which is a like a Chinese production that's made almost three billion dollars. No, this, like, this is in the wow. U.S. Did it make it in the U.S.? No, no, is this is this is, no, this it's, is it's domestic. Completely Chinese. No, this uh, is well, Frank well, you can have it. it. No, you can have it. No, 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 no Mike, <laughs> shut up. Now the, what, what? the game is the game is it's only based on domestic box office oh, okay. draw, right. so it doesn't count international sales oh, or sure. CDs or any of that I bullshit. Take it. It's no, shut up, shut up. Anyway, so you have to come on next year. You have to come on and play. All right. and, and it's, I'm in. I'm in. And it's it's not about how good the fucking movie is. As de- yeah. how I, good it is. Oh, I get that. Zero to do with anything. It's how much money that motherfucker will make. Did you know that's that, what that you do have him and Gogs pit against each other in this? Yes, that great to watch. That's it. No, Gogs has, Gogs has Gogs. nothing about box office. Like that, yeah, oh, I'll he did pretty destroy good. him. He did. He came <laughs> in. Hey, hey. Oh shit! All There's you gotta do is talk. Hopefully a Despicable Me movie comes out next year and I'll just clear up. Like, that's yeah. all you got to take is the Despicable <laughs> fucking yeah. Me movie. Yeah, Mike, Mike right. Mylar cleaned up on that motherfucker this year. Jesus yeah. It's insane. Like, I looked at the numbers. I was like, I didn't even know that movie came out. It's right. made, it's like a number three movie this year. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have to, you have, so, so in, 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 I think it's in three weeks. It's the first week of, the first Monday in October. We're going right. to, we're going to do the wrap up. So you, if you watch that, you'll see how we all did, and we'll talk about the movies and shit. But you got to come on. Speaking of wrap up, yeah. speaking of wrap up, yeah, wrap it up. Trying to wrap this up. Sorry, sorry. Okay, everybody. All right, all right, all right. This is it. Okay, all right. Here we go. Right. I'm, I'm gonna do it now. I'm not even gonna like. Here we go.